solving AEC circuits by hand, we can visibly see the changes of the circuit in terms of amplitude and phase, but sometimes it's hard to understand what that means in terms of a waveform or something that you would see on an oscilloscope. So for this example problem here, number 7-29, we saw that the wave, the current going through the capacitor was a little lower amplitude and a little bit out of phase. But let's plot this in Circuit Lab and so we can get a better understanding of what this would look like in a real circuit and on an actual plot you might see on an oscilloscope. Look at the previous circuit inside of Circuit Lab and make sure that our calculations align with simulation. So to begin with, we, we're not going to be using these ideal sources up here anymore. Those are our uh, DC sources. And so down here we have our AC sources with a alternating voltage source and an alternating current source. So for this particular problem, we're going to take our current function generator and move it on over here. And we want to set the parameters for the function generator, so we double click into it. And we'll just call it IS to give it the same name as before. And this voltage source has an amplitude of 12. And if you recall, our frequency in radians per second was 2 pi times 10 to the 4. The frequency that's here in Circuit Lab is represented in terms of hertz. And so to move from radians to hertz, you divide by 2 pi. So thankfully, the problem is already referenced as 2 pi times 10 to the 4 radians. So here, our answer is only going to be 10 to the 4, which is 10,000. So that would be 1 with 1, 2, 3, 4, 4 zeros. Now we can put our components in. We had a resistor, which had a value of 20 ohms, and a capacitor, which had a value of 1 microfarad. And so that's already the default value in Circuit Lab. And we can start connecting our components up. And so we want to stitch them all together in this nice parallel circuit. And we want to make sure we don't forget to put in a ground because otherwise our simulation tools will not be happy. Okay, now that we've got our circuit built, let's come over into the simulation. And the kind of simulation that we want to build is a time domain simulation. Because our solution is in terms of time, because we're looking at waves over time, we need a time simulation. Let's start our simulation always at time zero. And since our wave is oscillating 10,000 times per second, let's view 10 of those waves. So eventually we should get 10 waves across our screen and our step time will be one microsecond. You really want your time step to be about 100 times smaller or 100 times faster than your frequency so you actually get smooth waves. And so here I'm going to click Add Expression and I'm going to click just above the current source and I'm going to delete the voltage reference because we only care about the current coming out. And I'm going to do the same thing just above the capacitor because that's the quantity we were solving for. And so now when I run this plot I should get a curve showing the current as a function of time out of the current source and a current through the capacitor as a function of time. And so as we run it we get lots of different oscillating waves and there's a lot of information on the screen. But let's zoom in to just a couple of sequences here and we can get a better understanding of what's going on. So from our legend, we can see that this aqua blue green wave is our source wave. And so we wanna make sure that this has an amplitude of 12, which it does. And then our orange wave is the current wave that is passing through the capacitor. And from our original analysis, we saw that it should be slightly delayed in phase, which it is, and have a smaller amplitude. And here, when we did it by hand, we calculated it as 9.38. And here in simulation, they're giving something a little bit closer to 9.24. Now, this difference is very small, and it may or may not matter given your application. Why is there the difference? because this is a simulator and it's probably calculating in uh, non-idealities about the capacitor. And so we did one sort of calculation and we came up with this. Possibly there was also some rounding errors in the calculation we did, but a difference of about 10, about 100 milliamps on something that's on the order of 12 amps coming in is not gonna really matter that much. So this is how you can see that this source wave we have this difference in phase between the two, 
and we can see how the having the capacitor in the circuit shifted the phase of the signals but also attenuated or reduced the amplitude of the current wave.